Okay, so let's start here. I'm just going to move through things in order. We're going to start with Aries, and we're going to look at so we'll look at Mars, and then we're going to also look at Venus, which is Aries. You know, Aries and Libra, they're partners. They're a pair. Aries as an archetype has to do with. Um, I'm going to compare this in a really gender stereotyped way, but little boys, let's say, your t classic little boy. If you're not like this as a little boy, that's okay, because my son is not this type of a little boy, and he's awesome. But like, if you jump off things, or you break things, I, or you like to hit things, you know, I'm like just do what you want to do, right when you want to do it. You know, it's very spontaneous. You're not thinking about it. You're just like, um, I want to run, okay? That's kind of Mars, immature Mars uh, energy. Um, also though, Mars has to do with when a little boy is taught how to harness that energy and a little girl. It's not just boys, but remember I'm being, I'm being, I'm being gender biased. Taught how to harness that energy and little boys, at least in Western culture, it's, it's okay. They're supported in the area of using their bodies in a way that's aggressive or competitive. Sports or going hunting or, you know, whatever. Shooting guns. Whereas girls many times are, are tend to naturally just lean not they just don't always tend to be as interested in being like ah you know crazy and some do but the ones that don't most girls are socially they're they're interested in social connection social skills that's why we have instagram and that's why we have justin bieber and we have boy bands you know venus has to do with libra has to do with relationship but it's about harnessing and learning how to use your mars how to use your aries instead of just going up and kissing someone that you like, it's like learning some finesse, learning how to romance the person. So it does have to do with um, affected behavior, right? So it, some people can take it to an extreme and can be total flirts and they are all about getting their validation through other people valuing them as attractive or, or smart or intelligent or whatever. It's like, I'm gonna act a certain way and I'm gonna worry. I want other people to see me kind of in a certain particular light, right? At the end of the day, Mars here is to be honored as is Venus, okay? Mars is your natural animalistic, really. It's just your instinctive self. Like you need to go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, right? You don't go, oh, I'm gonna just talk my bladder out of needing to go. Like that's not going to work, you get to go. Whereas, this is not a good metaphor, but um, but Venus could be potty training your child. I mean, it is. That's potty training, learning to hold it. You can hold it for a second. We're not home yet. Don't you do a pee in the car seat? <laughs> I don't know who would have said that. But teaching a child that you have drives and impulses, yes, but there's also other people in the world and that you have to be learn how to be considerate of, learn how to balance your needs and their needs. And then the shadow side of Libra is worrying too much about what this other person's going to think and dis totally disowning one's natural desires. Okay, So balance between these two. Um, so having our Venus principle, or, or rather our Mars principle, having that in Gemini, the twins, which I think of as an androgynous sign because I think of it as yin and yang, male and female, it's a duality of, uh, there's a variety, you know, it's the recombination of genes. So you have mother's genes and father's genes coming together and they're half of, there's this whole process that happened before they even came together, right? So they're this really unique, funky combination of genes and they come together and um, create, you know, this, this human, something that's never been created before. It's really cool. So Gemini, um, when you have Mars and Gemini, we are maybe we can be jumping from thing to thing. We can be experimenting, etc. Now, but though when we look at the draconic chart, okay, we've got our Mars down here in Pisces, right? Pisces, two degrees of Pisces. And it's taken a lot of hits. It's really in its dance with the other planets. It's like it's moved into position. Uh, it's in a little T-square, and it's the quickest planet. So, boop, 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 moves into Gemini in the tropical, Pisces in the draconic, which have to do with their mutable transition, change. Also, um, to me, because of the other things in the chart, because of the square to Jupiter in Sagittarius, Jupiter's retrograde, looking at where have you done things that have gone and run contrary to your truth? Where are you in patterns where you keep doing the same thing over and over again because you're trying to get your needs met, your little inner child needs, your love needs, you know, um, met, but you keep running into the same patterns. Maybe you're hurting people over and over and over again, but you're being unconscious because you have wounds from your childhood and they just play out in a, in a different way, right? 
So this is going to be a T-square within the tropical. The polarity point from that Neptune, which, which is where you go to heal it, is in Virgo. You know, it's in Virgo. It's, it's my Mercury, so I'm a perfect person to talk to you about this, I guess. But recognizing that you can heal. Like if you're, I don't believe that you're a narcissist, so you're screwed. You can never find a relationship. Or you're a codependent, so you're always going to be just, you know, with addicts or people that are abusers. It's not, I don't believe that's true. There's a thing called therapy, and there's all different types of therapy. I highly recommend Jungian uh, therapy because it works with the inner unconscious realm, you know, as well as the conscious realm, which I think is quicker than just talk therapy because you can bullshit your therapist for years, right? You go and say what they think they want to say because you want to get in trouble because they hold a role as an authority figure, like a parent. So Jungian, I think, is much better. Okay, I'm not a doctor, so, you know, at your own risk. Um, but coming over to that Virgo, it's beautiful because we have a 19 degree Virgo sun, moon, conjunction in the deep chart. Exactly opposite Neptune. Where have you not allowed your true self to be seen, your inner child? Where have you been like, ah, it's not good enough, I'm not perfect enough? You know, when I was this age, usually really pretty young, like early elementary, I learned I couldn't sing, or I learned I couldn't draw, or I learned that I was horrible at softball, or dodgeball, or whatever. School. I had dyslexia, and it was really hard to read, or I didn't learn to read until I was older. So I have a, a little splinter in me, a little belief, a little, even a little part of my identity. Am I, maybe in my little box, it's like a little part of my little self broken off, and it's like in my little box, and I carry it around, and I'm like, oh, this is my sad story. I look at it sometimes, I'm like, oh, when you feel sorry for yourself, you know, you look at it and cry. I do it all the time. I'm working on it. <laughs> but Virgo is here. Virgo is here to help you see we can fix this. There's a there's a way to heal child wounds. And, and the way as an adult is to own your shit. If you are dating people over and over that are, this is a big one because I've dealt with this a ton lately. If they are really different in age from you, we're talking Okay, if this person, if you could be this person's parent, mother or father, right? This is childhood stuff. This is 100%, I believe, coming from wounded child stuff that you're trying to fix and heal. You're trying to, those who are older are trying to go back to perhaps the age that that person is at right now. Or the other cooler thought, you take today's date and then you do a, com a composite chart with your birth date. Where does that land you? What year? How old were you that year? That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get to that space. You can do the same thing actually, um, and to a certain extent, take that person's chart with your chart when you were born, both you were born, right? And so your composite chart with this person, what was happening in your life then that you're trying to fix for both of you, right? It's kind of a cool trick. Now, um, when we, let's talk about, so Mercury then, with Mercury being in, no, we're doing Mars, sorry. With Mars being in Gemini, the opposite Jupiter, square Neptune, it's time to do some work, right? Like, it's time to make a decision. It's time to stop going and speaking out of both sides of our mouth or going into different directions and then being like, what? You know, ah, if you need to be in a place, okay, if you want to do real work, inner work that has to do with problems in your life, you have to get dirty. You have to commit yourself to doing the work. You're committing yourself to your inner child. Otherwise, you're going to keep, like if you party a lot, if you try to escape life through, you know, not developing real relationships with people, but going after people who either don't want you or going for people that you know are weaker than you that you can take advantage of, but you're not like trying to do it consciously, you know, I'm not saying anyone's bad. Just recognize it, right? Like where do you... Where can you be flaky with yourself even? So then, so take a peek at that. If you come down and you look at this though, this Mars down, the Pisces, Pisces Mars and the Draconic, uh, we then get a deeper, even better story when we go over into the deep chart. So in the deep chart, our, our Mars, got to get pulled up here, I'm in a little different order, it is in Libra. And <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to just look at my little notes here because this is better than I have it written out to. So it's a Mars and Libra. And this Mars is at the very end, okay? And it's right at 27. It's right next to Jupiter. And the symbols, I didn't read the symbol for, for, um, for the overall new moon. I'll get to that in a moment. The Mars symbol is a single white swan swimming through gray mist, okay? Right next to Jupiter, which 
goes with Mercury, we'll get that in a moment, but Jupiter's right next to it, doc, it's the Dr. Jekyll, the good guy, drinks the potion in the sign of Libra, Jupiter and Libra, I believe what I'm doing right now is good and it's going to be, hopefully, it's an experiment, but hopefully it's going to turn out well, maybe I turn into Hyde, maybe I stay Jekyll, I don't really know, right? Um, with the single white swan swimming through gray mist as the Mars, Mars is in Libra in the deep chart, right? Venus is in Aries in the tropical chart. They're both in opposite, they're both in wonky placements. They're about learning how the other person, if you're a woman, trying to understand the man, like really trying. If you are a man, learning how to be, to do things in a way that are more beautiful, kind, considerate, not just jumping off the couch and then kicking your sister in the face on accident, right? Like, or if you do, apologizing, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I just was really excited watching Spider-Man, you know? Um, so the, it's graceful. A single white swan. Single. One person, right? Swimming through gray mist. So even if you're not sure what the outcome will be, moving into that position of gracefulness, of being gracious, of being kind, considerate, and thinking of the other person, all right? So our masculine, the men in, many times in this world, are going to be thinking about um, romance, but from a place that has to do with actually healing their relationship to what it means to be a man and being more open to being a man who's romantic or who's thoughtful, who's softer, who will sit and talk to a woman or try to understand where she's coming from. Been a big, 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 this last two weeks, really big for conversations that have been between men and women usually, or if you're um, gay or whatever color or stripe, between one person who's kind of the masculine and one who's more the feminine. And, and really lovely efforts have been being made of trying to really understand each other. Not always going the way that maybe both parties want, but the desire to be honest, the desire to be, to let that little child be seen as is and it being good enough, right? Okay, so the, here's where Mars is at. Now, when we look at Venus, Venus in the tropical chart. So what's a parent? She's hanging out in the sign of Aries, 17 degrees of Aries. So, she, you know, she'll only be there for a little bit longer and then she'll pop into, into Taurus uh, in about, like, you know, in general, I'd say in about, about two weeks, she'll, she'll fully be into Taurus. So, so Venus um, in Aries is kind of the woman, all us ladies, how we've learned and had to deal with maybe being independent and being on our own, maybe in our relationships, times where we have, let's look, we have a square to Saturn in Capricorn, conjunct the south node, your dad. This is dad stuff up and down, inside and out. Or when you were younger, anyone who is a male authority, someone older than you, could even been a big brother, who had control, who had power to shape your world. Now, this can be even people, if you've experienced abuse, if you've experienced secrets, big time for secrets coming out that are family secrets. It's big, 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 okay? Even if it's you know something and you know everybody else knows it, but nobody ever talks about it. Or if you had an affair, but you're a good person, but you, like, you need to make things right. This is very much a time of making things right. Just being honest first with yourself because at the end of the day, it's recognizing what I did was wounding to me, my inner child, right? My, my worth, my value it was wounding to you. You participated, both of us, right? And overall, it's just we're just repeating old unconscious stories that aren't good. They're, it's not why we're here. We're here to grow and evolve, move towards love, not towards like hurting ourselves. Um, so Venus in Aries has this kind of quality. There's a bravery. And there's an appreciation. This is why we're having fights. People are having fights right now, you know. Um, especially if you've got, if you've got anything that's kind of in a cardinal sign, in the middle of a cardinal sign. This is an active time for you to recognize how you behave in your interactions with other people. And so there can be fights. There can be uh, sort of a lot of passion too. It can be that as well. Um, but be careful if you're dating someone. Love triangles. A lot of love triangles, as of this last two weeks, have kind of been dissolved right around the time of that full moon, two weeks ago. And then people are like, going back in, sorry, blah, 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 blah. and um, not giving up, not letting go yet. Um, the person who maybe felt like they were victimized, you know, is like letting the per perpetrator, they're just setting the triangle up again. They're just like, let's set it back up, because that's what I know, it's what I'm comfortable with. You know, if dad wasn't around, um, or if I'm someone who am a male and I feel really bad about myself because 
I'm married to someone that's like my mom basically but um, this other girl is not available and she's really exciting to me and she understands me and I'm having an affair or whatever and my I have a very large love bucket that can never be full and I always need strokes from women because I have insecurity issues that stuff's like <laughs> been going back and forth and back and forth this last couple of weeks so being honest with yourself about when you hurt someone else not just doing it and being like well they're an adult they can handle it because that's not how it works in relationships with people so much unconscious material that's your most it's like your best parts of yourself your little innocent inner child that has been disinformed in your life right your value your worth your lovability and then you you know we not just you we all do we go and hurt the other person's little inner child and maybe we even get into a relationship with them we see oh this is like a really pretty amazing person but shit we're not like we're not compa- we're not meant to be to, we're not each other's uh, correlate you know we're here to teach each other something or we're here this person helped me grow in some certain way that was wonderful but maybe it's time to move on um, so there's going to be a little bit of back and forth on that um, this month because it's Taurus stuck it's like I want to keep that acorn around my nuts so it doesn't get all moldy at least it'll survive the winter um, okay so that being said Mars and Venus are having a fun little dance and if we come over to the deep chart okay Venus in the deep chart oh sorry I didn't talk about Venus in the, in the dr- draconic shadow material the Venus think of Venus as well as the daughter externalize as a daughter if you're a man it would be the parts of yourself that as a child would have been feminine you know the parts of yourself that would want to be nice to other kids or would like art or would want to wear pink or would want to would cry easily was sensitive or um, just f- had social skills that wanted to make things harmonious that wanted to kind of get along have everyone get along if you were taught not to do that or to be tough or to like you know oh that's girly that's wussy or or if you saw your father or someone you respected um, treating your mother in a way that was unacceptable and if you f- felt torn between you love your dad you're a boy like your dad I mean, you love your mom but you need to be tough now and like you know or if there's abuse I mean that's even a whole other layer of betrayal and a fragmentation of the psyche and of the identity so with this Venus in the Draconic, it's in Sagittarius. And what degree? It's 27 degrees. It's right next to, the, to our galactic center, the black hole, you know, of our galaxy, which is pretty cool. I think of this as like that black hole. It's saying, give me your stuff. I'll take it. I'm recycle it. So it's like a portal. You know, people talk about portals and they attach portals to weird things. I'm like, why is that a portal? Uh, black hole makes sense to me. I'm like, well, that's where we're moving, you know, as a, as a collective. We're on a rock and that's how we're headed. So, um, more or less so anyway Venus how we behave the things we believe about our story about how we're supposed to behave and treat other people um, also if we buy into something and spontaneously just jump into something without thinking through it and we're not being we're not listening to advice we're not like we're just going blindly after something for hopes that it'll be amazing you know but then we get hurt we get hurt and we get hurt or we hurt people and we hurt people and we hurt people and they, they should have known better or I should have known better um, Venus and Sagittarius is loves gambling and taking risks and on the shadow side doing it very naively with the belief that I can I can make this work I can get this person to change for me or I see this person as an amazing um, you know fix to the situation I'm in okay that is not accurate and see how it's also squaring the nodes right squaring Pluto and Saturn there's the father archetype which are in Libra relationships things you've learned about what it means in a relationship to commit to another person um, the example you saw as a child that had to do with male like father figures okay or if you belong to a church or a particular culture that has strict expectations that they put on you tied to gender in particular I believe that's the stuff with a retrograde Saturn a retrograde Pluto we're looking at it and we're getting rid of it send it up send it to Venus and she can toss it into the black hole you know she can um, because it's a, the Venus is also an Aries it's a kick-ass Venus right it's like enough of this bullshit although the Aries Venus isn't at the same degree as the as the black hole but also the draconic chart is a made up it's not a real it wasn't real in the sky okay but 
it's it's a metaphor okay when we look at the deep chart let me drink some water because I have dark my mouth dry we have Venus in our deep chart and Leo what is Leo the inner child not only is it the inner child it's many times it has to do with your creative feminine look what I made or look at this dance I can do or um, hey mom will you talk to me right now it's the part of you that needs attention for and validation from those as a child who were supposed to be there to help you with your identity formation you know um, and I recognize this is different in different cultures it's fine it's your but it does have to do with who you think that you are it comes from when you're a little kid you're if you're grown up time to look at that and examine it so it's at 22 degrees the killer be killed I said call it that so I need a better name but it's that degree that has this element of urgency it's like now I need to do this now I need to take care of this now I am no longer comfortable throwing myself into relationships with someone who doesn't validate me or, or love me back or I recognize that I'm playing out my childhood stuff I'm looking for maybe if you're like a, a sex addict like you sleep with all these women and it's maybe because you, you have an inferiority complex you just want to feel loved you're looking but you're like looking for it in the wrong place maybe you really maybe you had a dad that you didn't really like his example as a man and a father or something and had expectations on you or you had secrets about yourself you liked pornography or you were secretly bisexual or la 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 whatever and you had to hide parts of yourself to be accepted by your family you could be seen by society as a, an acceptable you know version of yourself and so you tucked your Venus down and you hit it. For women, where do you, if you're you know, straight, just, you know what I'm saying, if you're lesbian, if you're gay, whatever, apply, you know if, you're, you, if you flux more feminine or more masculine, do you initiate or do you receive, All right? Okay. So if you're more of a receiver, if you're more the one who's going to try and create harmony, try to make everybody kind of get along, that's Venus. Um, with it, Venus and Leo, she needs to feel like she's seen and she's special so you better believe anybody who has a son at 19 i would say but i really would move more towards 20 degrees to like 24 25 degrees of a fire sign of a fixed sign which i have so many friends that are having squares to this venus okay or trines so the trines are going to be helped they're going to see okay it's a great time for me to work on some creative projects I've wanted to work on. I want to write this song. I want to, um, I keep using art. It doesn't have to be art. I want to start this business. I want my husband to hear me when I talk to him. I want to feel like he thinks I'm beautiful or he thinks that I'm special. Okay. Now it's a fair thing to want from your husband. A, does he know it? B, are you looking for, I see this all the time with people, male and female. They want their partner to be their parent, like their mom who loves them unconditionally and who's like thinks that they're the best thing since sliced bread when really they're being an asshole or they're being really naggy and bitchy or whatever you know like it's like you're not doing you're not being the thing you're want you're, you're putting on your partner unrealistic expectations it's not their job to do that it's not their job to make you feel loved it is their job if they're your partner your, your marriage partner to listen to you if you need to be heard but you also need to recognize when you've been talking their freaking ear off and stop leave them alone <laughs> Let them process. Okay, so this Venus is kind of one that's a little, she can be a little diva-y, a little focused on the self and what I need, what I want, and how you're not giving it to me. And if you're doing that, that is you coming from the child. If you're doing the high side, the more positive, healthy side, it's letting your inner child be seen for who your inner child really is and not hiding yourself. Okay, and that's beautiful. Um, and if you look, you notice, like I said, Venus has that square to Saturn. So this ties into this Venus and Leo. She's tying into um, the Saturn, which we've got in the, what is it, in our eighth? Yeah, it's in Scorpio. Saturn and Pluto, which are together. So these fears that we have, a retrograde Saturn, fears that we have that need to be purged, that have to do with secrets, that have to do with feeling um, power dynamics where we felt totally disempowered. We saw our parents yelling at each other or one of our parents hitting the other parent or having an affair or keeping a really big bad secret or they were like a, an addict and the other parent didn't know or you know different different possibilities. Um, experiencing things you weren't ready to experience okay and this isn't true for everybody so if it's not true for you yeah. um, but if it's not true for you maybe you go around trying to rescue people you know you may have learned how to be the one who had like my story is the stoic like i i was the one that my parents would talk to about their stuff 
which is probably why I do what I do now. Um, because I was a very mature little girl and smart and like, I don't know, I just naturally liked psychology and liked understanding people. But what does that do to me? That means I don't ever get to be sad. I don't ever get to be crazy and like, oh, all over the place. I just had to internalize that part of myself. I'd go outside and be with my dog or go to my playhouse and like cry or get really mad or like, you know, I ran away like 5,000 times, you know, as a kid. That kind of thing. Because nobody would listen to me anyway. So anyway, point is we all do different things to try and get our needs met. And this is a really good time to go, oh my gosh, no one else and none of my behavior towards anyone else is going to help me go back in time can't go back in time all you can do is forgive and that's the beauty of this new moon this has to do with looking at the parts of your parents as best you can and with your story giving them the benefit of the doubt you know they were really tired they had postpartum from just having a baby they just lost their job they had lots of stress they really weren't happy in their marriage they're they're just like fundamentally sort of flawed and not at all compatible they got married really young or whatever but they're trying to make it work like give them the Give them the courtesy and, and the the benefit of the doubt to try and understand where they're coming from. And just ultimately, if it was bad, if it was abuse, if you got hurt, be angry. Allow yourself to be pissed off. Allow your, go to therapy. I mean, for sure, obviously, you know. Um, if you haven't, if you need to go to therapy, this is a great month. Go get yourself signed up. Do some some work on yourself to do your healing because no one else is going to do it for you. And the more you go around unconsciously hurting other people, to try and as a call for help for them to help you. You're just gonna push people away from you. You're not gonna get that inner child's needs met at all. It's the opposite. And you're gonna perpetuate an ego story that's not even who you really are. It's like the very ego story that your deep inner self is so resentful of having to, to perpetuate. You know? If you say things like, I'm always the bridesmaid, never the bride, or if you date people, um, you know, if you're a woman, you date men that are much younger, but they're, you know, ultimately they're just using you more or less. Maybe they really like you and they have a mother complex. But like at the end of the day, do you really want to be married to your child, to someone who's like, you need to take care of like a mom? Um, like you might think you do, but you don't because that's a power trip. That's a, that's a codependent thing. That's where you'll try and you'll feel safe because you can, you think you can fix them or take care of them or um, heal them in some way and then they're just uh, anyway it's not a healthy relationship it's not an equal partnership okay so if we come over and we look here um, let's jump into the deep chart and let me talk about the I have these all mixed up bear with me one sec oh okay I don't want to talk about now and this is a lot of information but I'm throwing the astrology at you if you're not following it it's okay um, when I drop the deep chart, and I'll tell you, I haven't told you guys how I do these yet. I will in the future. But when I draw them up, I do just put the planets in their natural houses. You know, it just makes it easier. So, for example, in the deep chart, we have 5th house, 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th. Uh, Not 9th, but 10th. That's where all our planets are. So this is core identity stuff as it moves through relationships with other people and then we experience betrayals and we experience secrets and we experience because Pluto on Saturn on the 8th we experience fears that we've developed about can I trust other people are they going to really hurt me I have to hide myself in order to be loved you know you've got over in the seventh house Ceres and Libra holding on to relationships relationship patterns you know ruled by that Venus and Leo the little inner child inside of you that's learned I have to do this to get a noticed. Maybe I have to be like as a woman, maybe I feel like I have to be with men, older men, and I have to just like be super sexy and like always like be pushing sex, push, push, push. And maybe I'm someone who really likes sex and that's fine, but but it's not a healthy, you know, maybe it's not a healthy balanced relationship. You know, maybe they're just at the end of the day, maybe you end up feeling hurt and used and like this person did me did me dirty. Right? So again, where are you taking action in your life and acting like an unhealthy little child? It's doing things in your behavior with other people in your relationships um, where you're either being selfish and you're pretending to be, oh, it's all about you, but really it's about you getting your needs met. I'm going to do all this stuff for you, but then I'm going to expect you to do something in particular back for me. That is not mature. That's not an adult. That's You're not individuated in that area. You know, it's something to work on. Um, where do you go looking? Because you have Venus, 22 degrees of Leo, squaring Saturn retrograde the father in Scorpio which is our sign that has to do with unconscious buried repressed material fears straight up fears about not being loved not being liked not being okay not being good enough 
you know, and something we've held inside of our little box. Pluto's right there, though, too, right? Pluto's right there. This is in the deep chart. It's different. It looks different from the, you know, from the tropical and dragonic charts. But um, it's the key. The beautiful part of this deep chart, Sun, 19 degrees of Virgo, is forming a lovely trine up to the 10th house where Neptune is at. And Neptune in the 10th, this harkens back to memories of the father or the authority figure when they let us down or they lied to us or they were a sham. Like they were married to our mom or mom was married to our dad for all these years. And then uh, it, it's in particular, a lot of times that the father's the one that's kind of carrying the responsibility. Okay, it's the things that the father, uh, his own insecurities, his own weaknesses, his own mistakes that might be being held inside the child as a truth. That's not a damn truth. It's a belief and it needs to be forgiven. We evolve and grow and change. Let it go, right? And it's very fascinating because the symbol for this Neptune, which is forgiveness, the symbol here is, it's like the uh, stalagmites, am I saying that right? And stalactites almost fuse together. So it's like old material that is calcified, that has to do with like false beliefs that you might have about commitment, um, the government, responsibility, the fears you have about yourself, uh, etc. It's all being, you know, it's in Capricorn, being ruled by that Saturn. That's in Scorpio, conjunct Pluto. Time to purge it, detoxify yourself by having it exposed. Secrets are going to come out. Truths are going to come out. I've heard lots of truths lately, tons the last two weeks about abuse, in particular sexual abuse, in particular also finding out about people who are like their sexual identity has been hidden and now their truth is coming out. It's like a, almost like we can't not. It's a time when it's time. So uh, again, Virgo is going to help by helping create a space of wanting to come clean, wanting to essentialize oneself, wanting to be truly purely who it is that we are. Okay. And, and sort of the child standing in front of the mother saying, mom, you're not listening to me, right? Um, I really love to wear pink and I'm a 13 year old boy and dad says I can't, you know, and it's mom kind of maybe, uh, she's like kind of trying to keep the peace maybe, but the moon also is with the child. So she's actually like got your back. She's trining Neptune. She's just saying, you know, it's okay. Just wear the pink. I'll talk to dad or, you know, or guess what? In life, there's going to be people you're going to worry way too much about what they think about you. And it really doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with you. So, okay. So you see, but because you're a grown up, you're going to have to be the mom and the child and the father and recognize where you're the father. Where do you find yourself um, needing to forgive your little child of being very different from you? Where have you tried to make parts of yourself pretend to play a story about Capricorn and what it means to be a man or what it means to be a, a parent or um, what it means to grow up and be grown up. Like, where do you try to run away from that? Where are you not allowing yourself to freaking grow into who you really are? Where are you keeping yourself as a five-year-old or an 11-year-old or whatever? Okay. Um, so yeah, great time for examining all of that stuff. And the, I didn't mention yet that Venus, just going back to Venus for a moment, uh, that part of us, male and female, that's the, you know, the part that wants to be liked, wants to be popular, wants to be, um, wants to have the right clothes, wants to be seen as attractive and, and cool. Okay. 22 degrees, fifth house, right? Squaring Saturn. So that's the fears that we have about not being good enough. And Scorpio, because Venus is fast. So Venus is moving towards Saturn. Okay. So it's an approaching square. So this ties right into this Capricorn material. Your fears, your world you built, your things you put on other, your, your, your sort of worldview, rules, standards that you place on other people. How you think they're going to judge you back when they might not give a hell, they give a damn, you know, they're like, I don't even notice that thing about you. That's your thing. If you're the type of person who takes on other people's shit, stop. That's Pluto Saturn and Saturn right now with Saturn is, you know, moving into a conjunction with Pluto. So right here, and also because Saturn and the Draconics and Libra ties right into the truths that you believe about yourself and your relationships with people, how you think you need to be and behave in order to be liked. So, so it's the come to Jesus moment. So if I need to be your Jesus, that's just fine. My Mercury's in Virgo, opposite this Neptune. I'm going to speak some 
realistic truth to the Neptune bullshit that you may have been buying about yourself, right? Like we all do it. It's normal. It is normal. We start out as children and that's the part, if you've studied chaos theory, that's the part of life that we have initial conditions you can't control. You got DNA, you got a family you're born into, you're a little baby. What are you going to do, right? You grow up, then you hit a point in your life where if you study like the double pendulum experiment, there's this swinging pendulum at attached at the bottom. It's like a, so that I'm not explaining this well. The top pendulum is attached. It's like a clock, you know, a clock hand. And it moves, but it moves like a pendulum back and forth. And we know it's not going to, that's all it's going to do. It's not going to, that's your, that's your, um, I don't know, your DNA. Nowadays, this is up for debate because you can change your sex. There's things you can do to change your body. You know, you, you can, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. We have a certain, to a certain extent, a certain fate that we're born into. At the very least, you're in a body. You didn't have any say about that. Your parents got lucky one night and then you came along. <laughs> fate, that's fate. The bottom pendulum is your free will. And I even like to think of it because I do believe in reincarnation. I like to think of each sort of um, movement of that crazy chaotic bottom you know, pendulum, wherever it might land, is the realm of possibility with what you've been given where you might take that pendulum. But that bottom free will portion is a fixed length, right? You're going to die one day, basically. So ends up at the end of the day, you're most likely to create a circle or like a, a semi circle, you know? So point being, you have free agency, you have free will, use it, like use it. The top part is only half of your story. That is your fate. Okay. Fate is something you have no control over. Destiny is the bottom part. Like you choose and write your destiny. You can rewrite. You can go back and look at the things that happened to you. Go to therapy if you had trauma and do therapy. Do work on, if nothing else, just forgiving the parts that you've interjected, the parts of yourself that you have taken of the mother or the father instead of being angry at the father or the mother. We take them in ourselves and we, we become angry to that little part of our inner child, you know? So that's something you have control over. Like, ooh choose to fix it that's what this is all about Virgo's practical and pragmatic and it is in the physical real world to do healing work that has to do deeply with forgiveness letting go surrender first you need to know what you're dealing with okay so if you're unconscious this moon's going to help you um be really careful if you're someone who has poor boundaries with people that's huge right now where do you let yourself settle for less than what you deserve where do you, where do you um, try to fix someone else instead of and feeling selfish when you're really not, it's not really what you're wanting? Um, where are you hoping that this other person will leave someone to be with you, right? Like, why do you want to cause, like, look at that, really look at that and examine it. Um, if you've been like in an, in an affair, that's a triangle. There's always a perpetrator, a victim, and then the person that's like the kind of the good guy who's like the counselor or the one who's like, you know. Don't be any of them. <laughs> That's, you don't want to be in a triangle. That's a child-parent dynamic. Get out of it. Okay. Um, I know I'm yammering. Sometimes I get excited and preachy. So also, also, so we've sort of talked the male principle, female principle, right? And they're both wonderfully in um, their opposite signs. So coming to a place of understanding. Why does we do what we do? Understanding if you're female, uh, you're animus that you project onto men. If you're, this is so common. I cannot tell you how many people born in the 90s, females, date older men. It's this huge trend right now. And they're men my age. They're like dad age, like literal, not just, hey daddy. No, but like really like he could be your dad. And it's not just occasional. It's like, what is happening? It's like all over the place. And it's because a lot of men, especially because I live in Utah, where a lot of men are Mormon. So they had an ethos that had to do with being masculine and what that looks like all during sort of that uh, sort of first wave, I suppose, of feminism. So it's all confused. Anyway, so those of us who have Pluto's in Libra. Hi, guys. That's a, those of us, you know, like from the 70s, basically, for the most part. We are having to rebuild marriage and rethink it and fix it. We had to kill it. I got, went through a divorce after 14 years of marriage, experienced, you know, relationships and have been out of anything for a while now, for as long as, like, since I've been sober, you know, which is last, uh, not October, last August. So if you have patterns, stop dating, stop, be friends with people. I know it's hard. You want someone in your life. You're going to just do it over and over again. You're not going to find your person that way. Even if you know someone that you're in love with, 
if you're repeating patterns, if you're cheating, if you're breaking up with one person and going back with another, or you know, anything where you have to have a person in your life, male or female, or you have to rescue someone to feel like you have value, you feel like you're needed, stop. That's you're putting pedestals. You're putting unequal, un, uh, no pedestals. Okay, because then that means one person has to. You both have to pretend to be something a little different than who you really are. If you're on a pedestal, you're gonna jump off, get pushed off, or fall off. None of those are pleasant options, especially for me. You'll break something, guaranteed. Don't get pedestals are stupid. Don't do that. See each other, right? Like see each other equally. There's this idiotic romantic notion that we're supposed to fix each other. The masculine and feminine are not about that. They're about like there are inherent gifts that both of us, you know, the masculine and feminine have. You're supposed to learn to understand one another and work with each other and recognize, man, like I recognize men in general as a stereotype. A lot of men are really good at things I so, am so horrible at, right? But I have intuition and creativity and color that they wouldn't have ever. They'll never have in their entire life. And so my life has benefited. Their life has benefited. You know, the go read The Way of the Superior Man if you need you know, a little intro on masculine feminine essences and how we need each other. And how women can't fully step into their beauty and into their... Um, their potential without a good man who stands steady, who observes them, who sees them or tries to as best he can, um, and who honors her, who honors her and her, you know, and her and all of her feminine craziness. And women, men need a woman. It's like a boat in an ocean. If you don't have an ocean, then the boat's not going anywhere. Just sitting there, boring old boat in the sand. If you, and it's not the best of all metaphors because the boat, the ocean can survive without the boat, which honestly sometimes is the deeper story. Like there's a quality to the fem feminine and masculine where women need to help their men feel like they need them. You know, hey, there's a boat out in my ocean. My ocean's like there's no one out here observing things and naming things and looking at the birds and the, you know, need a man for that. And man, men, the masculine helps with observation, right? So anyway, you get my point. Um, so this whole new moon has to do with the healing that you can glean and, and the healing of your own inner child, your heart, your identity, your true essence, who you really are, uh, the parts of yourself that you, where you took on a role, okay, Virgo, where did you take on a role to try and fix things in your family? Or where did you take on a role now as an adult where you're unconsciously trying to avoid pain, right? Um, and where can you help heal your own masculine feminine essences, those inner principles, the principles that we all share? Where can you do better? And and big, 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 the biggest, where can you serve other people? Not in a way where you're getting into bad boundaryless relationship patterns, but where you're consciously choosing uh, in your relationships to recognize another person's wound and to say, oh my gosh, I see that you're bleeding out of your head. Maybe I have some bandages and I'm healthy and good. I'll, I'm going to help you with that. You know, doesn't mean I'm going to stay overnight with you and rock you to sleep in bed like your baby, because you're a big grown up and I believe in you. But I'm going to be here for you when you need me. So you know, healthy relationships. And then also for men, let women be women. Women are, hello, you know the hormones that we deal with every month. They're insane. It's no wonder why we feel like half the time I wake up, I'm like, how do I feel today? What's my mood today? It's like. Because you're welcome. Like, we're the ones also who feel things, who know things. Many times, way before, a lot of a lot of times intuitively, women just know stuff. And their man's like, oh, you're being crazy. You're overreacting. You're being silly. Or a woman thinks her guy's cheating. And she's like, I'm going to look in your phone. Well, because he is. And he's like, no, don't. And she shouldn't be with him in the first place. Like, she instead of looking at his phone, by the way, if you're a girl that's doing that or a guy that's doing that, it's not time to look into someone's phone. That is a gross violation of someone else's privacy. And it also shows total lack of respect for your own sense of self that you need to do that. It's going to make you feel shitty about yourself that you had to sink to that level. And the other person's going to think like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Why are you doing that? Are you cheating on me? Like, you know, it's just not, no. If anything, take a step back. Keep your dignity. Venus is in Leo. Keep your freaking dignity but also respect the other person's dignity. Don't sink down there, okay? Um, so finally, the last thing I kind of want to talk about maybe is 
probably missing, skipping over stuff. That's okay. Oh, Uranus. I was going to do the dyads, but I didn't. But whatever. Okay, Uranus. This is our planet that it takes Uranus 87 years, right? So it's like about the length of a human life. I think we're right around 87, 90 years right now on average in America. We'll see if it stays like that, if we keep eating Fritos and, you know, soda. But anyway, um, Uranus is the planet that's to do with individuation. So it's with you at the beginning of your life when you're born. And it has to do with the collective themes that we're all how society is growing and evolving, what it is that society in general is trying to sort of break free from or sort of move, level up to the next thing, right? Uh, I was born with Uranus and Scorpio. It goes so nicely with my Pluto and Libra. Uranus and Scorpio has to do with power dynamics, sexuality, uh, financial, sharing money, so like marriage stuff. Um, and then my Pluto being in Libra, marriage and equal partnerships. So there's some really heavy duty, messy stuff that our generation, Gen, Gen Xers, uh, a lot of people are just like, I'm just not gonna get married. Eh, fuck it, I don't even wanna go there, right? That is not the answer. That's called wussing out. That's called stopping your individuation and your growth. You're stunting yourself from having a full and a complete life. Doesn't mean you have to get married, but um, getting to a place if you don't wanna be married, like where you really, Maybe you're asexual, you know, like, I don't know. There's, I'm not going to go into the politics of that, but that's something our generation's working through. And it's not easy. It's Scorpio. You're on a Scorpio. So in this chart, in the deep chart, Uranus is in Virgo, 23 degrees, and it's a silver trident, which is the symbol you know, for Neptune. So it's bringing us right on back to that Neptune, which is, you know, opposites forming that T-square. Tied into Jupiter, truth, what you believe, what you tell yourself, or even the patterns you have that you don't even see that you're doing, but you're just like, eh, this is just what I do, you know? I just like dating all kinds of guys. I like having sex on the first date, or I like, you know, being really just kind of scantily clad. It's so fun, I'm free. Really? Because probably you're getting attention from men that's like, whoa, you're hot. Are you being validated for your body and your physical stuff? How does that make you feel? What happens if you get a little fat? What happens if you have babies and your husband married you just because you're hot and now you're fat? right? So not a real story. It's a false story. And it's one that our society has been selling us men and women. Men have to be like tough and like not care if women are, you know, them bitches be, what's that one? Um, ho, ho, them hoes aren't loyal, right? Kind of a thing. But then I hear these same guys talking about all the hoes that they're hooking up with. I'm like, y'all are hoes, all everybody. You're all being mean and disrespecting each other's, your essences. You're just hurting. It's stabbing each other just over and over again, kind of literally. So, um, Anyway, so point is, the Virgo, and sorry, that's my Virgo, I'm Vir my Venus is in Virgo, my Mercury is in Virgo, so I do get a little like, mm, you shouldn't do that, but it's because I observe and watch things, and I see how people get hurt. So, um, at the end of the day, this is all about self-work, recognizing those people in your life that are toxic, forgiving them, letting them go with love, as they say, and look. And then really paying attention to your behavior. Why did you bring them into your life in the first place, right? Like, what's the shadow material that you need to work on? And going to therapy if you need to, right? Okay, I'm going to stop here. This is plenty. It's 48 minutes. So <laughs> if you're here with me still, awesome. Thanks for hanging in there. And overall, if you're here, I'm going to give you the symbol. So this new moon symbol, it's Virgo 19 in the deep chart. It's the expanse of the Himalayas in the distance. So if you pic picture that, right? I love this. This is my, this is, you know, this is my right next to my Mercury. So I love this one. The Himalayas are gorgeous. They're majestic, and they are a sight to to behold. I would imagine in person, right? But they're off in the distance. So you're gonna have to trek. You're gonna have to get, walk to get there. You're gonna have to do some damn work to get yourself over to those mountains. And then you have to ask yourself, do I want to go over those mountains? You know, is there? Am I on a trek? Is that what I'm here for? Is there a really cool monastery up there that I want to go see? Okay, yeah, there is. Okay, awesome. Here's my plan. Um, is there a helicopter? No, oh, yeah, no, there's no helicopter to get you up there. You have to walk your ass up the mountain. You got to do the work. You have to be dedicated. You have to be dutiful. You have to sacrifice things that you want for yourself, right? Like, that means I have to read less and, like, I don't know, focus on housework more. Except for I just got a roommate, and she likes housework, so I can be a raccoon. So... If there's something worth having, it takes discipline and focused effort and love and being seen by 
partners, relationships, or friends, or whatever. Just being your real self, living a life that's authentically your life. Not one you thought you were supposed to live, or that you told yourself you needed to live, or whatever. Stop. And no one can walk up the damn mountain but you. So also stop making excuses. Stop blaming other people. Mom and dad. Your childhood. Your last boyfriend that was a jerk. Your last girlfriend that was a bitch. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, women are this way. Men are that way. Stop. That's stupid. That's stupid and lazy. It ain't going to get you up the mountain. You're just going to be standing at the bottom looking up all your friends that you came with on the trek are all up there at the monastery. And you're just watching them like, oh, wish I could be up there, but I'm too wimpy or scared or blah, blah, blah. May the fourth be with you. Okay. I'm going to go. Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.